but is the importance of knowing our authority, um, our identity, who we are supposed to be in Christ. And again, we've kind of danced all around that this evening, um, but it's just becoming more and more essential. God needs us. <laughs> he needs, he is building an army. We've talked about this before. He needs us to stand up. He needs our characters to ha have gotten to the level where he can use us. That's what that's why we go through all of the things. One of the reasons we go through the things that we go through. Our mess ends up being our message. If he saves us out of every little thing and we never have any victory, um, we don't build our character. Then we can't lead somebody else to victory because we can't figure out how to lead ourselves to victory. We were kind of talking about this before last week, Melissa, you asked the question, um, something along the lines of when he forgives us of our sins, do we, are there also, are there still consequences? Sometimes in his wisdom, he knows the end game. He knows his plan for each one of us. Sometimes he, he, he cleans that all away for us. And he not only forgives us for our sins, he wipes away those natural consequences. But more often than not, we have to walk through the natural consequences. Our sins are forgiven, but we have to walk through the natural consequences of the, consequences of the choices that we've made so that we can build our characters and we can become the people who then can help his people, God's people. Um, because it is a journey that gets us to the other side. And if we just embrace it, figure that out. Okay, this is a, a journey. If I embrace the journey, I'm going to get through it much faster. He's holding my hand through it. Okay, he's got your hand. He's leading you and he's guiding you through it. Um, figure that out quickly and don't whine, you know, <laughs> so that you can receive that victory. And then he can use you to guide everybody else through that same character building path that you just came through and had victory in so now you can lead others through it that's the purpose it doesn't it's painful probably <laughs> more than likely 100 percent while you're going through it yes but he's got a plan and he's got a purpose and just you know don't keep going around that barn say okay yes lord you know and when we come under his authority and we give our will to him that's when um, we now can step into authority because we have no authority until we come under his authority. You know, otherwise you're working for the wrong camp. And I know whose kingdom I'm in, you know, and, um, and I want to do it his way. And always have him get me, you know, back under his authority if I ever stray. So that I can do everything that he wants me to do, you know, and, and that's when we come into, a, into authority, when we believe that we have authority, when we know who we talked about this identity, identity thing, how essential that is, um, how essential it is to understand who we are. We're kings, uh, we are a royal priesthood, you know, we, we are part of his kingdom. He is our king and we are his his children, we are joint heirs with him, heirs, not heirs. Um, and um, when we understand that we are in authority, that's when we can, we can do the most good for him, you know, and shine for him. And because that's what he's waiting for, to get each one of us there, you know, and it's a character building journey along the way. And um, when one of the things that we have to, you know, there's that verse in Matthew 18, 18, and it's the, the binding of what we permit here is uh, what we permit here is permitted here. What we permit uh, loose there, the binding and the losing. But what are you permitting in your own life? Have you thought about that? Instead of binding it. We should be binding also the things that you know, um, any evilness, any any spirits that might be 
holding us back. We should be binding, you know, not all binding everything out there, <laughs> binding what could be holding us back, you know, realize that whatever's going on in our life, we could actually be part of that because we might be permitting it without even realizing it and re take back our authority. We need to remember that we are in authority and that we are, we've been set apart. You know, once we become in his kingdom, we are set apart for his goodwill. And we need to hurry up and get there so that we are useful vessels for him. I mean, the enemy knows we are a threat. Do we know we're a threat? <laughs> I mean, do you know that you're a threat? Be one. We need to be a threat. You know, when the spirit shows up, a lot of times when you start having people pop off at you, you know, uh-oh, I've just, I've just awakened the beast, you know? But we have to learn. I've, I've figured out the, the, you know, by experience that um, when that beast is awakened, um, that we're supposed to, to stand in authority. But one of the ways to break that, um, that beast when he rears his ugly head is responding in love telling that person about how much you love them. And then the beast can't manifest. What would you like to say, Brenna? I was just going to say, um, along with what you were saying, is that if you're not coming under spiritual attack, my question would be, are you in the game? Absolutely. Because Satan doesn't mess with people that are warming the benches. He messes with the people that are on the field, getting roughed <laughs> up in the thick of it. That's where... He does not want you to be. So if you're sitting complacently in your life and everything's going great, I would seriously ask God, okay, Lord, is this the calm before the storm or, is, and, or your kindness just giving me a break from the grief I've just come out of, or am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing somewhere in my life? In the ministry that I am in, and anytime someone new comes on board... I always tell them, listen, you're here now, and this is important work, what we're doing. So I want you to understand, you are going to get attacked, either your health, the health of your family, your finances, your vehicle, it's going to happen. So just understand, when it does, it's okay. Just let us know, we're going to work with you, because we get what's going on. But if you're not doing something that is actively, uh, if you're not standing on the gates of hell and pulling people to cross, if you're not out there being the hands and the feet, if you're not shouldering something for somebody or praying intercessively for somebody, then, you know, and you're not getting attacked, it's something that you might need to really seek the Lord about because, um, you're, you can't be a Christian in this world and, and not experience that um, almost daily in some way. But the thing is, is that when you get used to living that, when you get used to being in that every single day, and he'll come at you in different creative new ways, anything, and he knows how to get you knocked off your feet. He knows. Okay. But you get better at it. You get better at getting up faster. You get better at recovering mentally and emotionally faster. You start recognizing more quickly what's really going on. And then you start praying about it. And the Lord is always quick to deliver. Amen. Amen. And no, Barbara, that's, that's not the case. I mean, the bigger of the threat you are, the more warfare that you have. Um, so, but at the same time, the more you know that the more you walk in authority and know who you are, um, you can combat a lot of that because they're like they they understand it now that they may try to come against you, um, but you know who you are, you know you know who you are in Christ. You know the authority, and that's you. And and they'll go around screaming like the little sissies that they are <laughs> because oh. you walk 
in authority now. But biggest thing is she's saying, if you're if everything's smooth sailing, you should probably be looking around. Going, Oops, I'm probably the dropping the ball somewhere. Um, can I say ahead, something? Megan. Yes, go right ahead. Okay, I think the more we become like Christ, the less we fit here on this earth. Okay, so it's not that you are being attacked. It's just that we don't fit in. Okay, it's like you're going against the current right okay you are completely going against the culture against what it's the normal here and we don't conform because we are being spirit-led okay so what the world wants it's for the flesh we have made a choice to walk by the spirit and it has nothing to do with the things that the world has to offer the more we grow to be like Christ, the less interest we have in the things of this world. So I believe, okay, that the more mature we are in Christ, the more we know who we are in Christ, yes, the more authority we have, and the more that we reflect, like we said, what's in our heart, if we're heeding the word of God in our heart, that is Jesus made flesh, the word of God. The more we have that hidden in our heart, the more we're reflecting who Jesus is. When the enemy comes, okay, he's not going to see me. He's going to see Jesus. And when I open my mouth, and if he's coming to try to deceive me or try to attack me, I know the truth. And the truth shall set me free. And the way I see it, it's like the Lord has put a shield around me that says no trespassing, you know, off boundaries no trespassing because he is with me he goes before me he goes behind me he goes beside me and he is in me and the enemy will not touch me he cannot touch me and 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 that is i, I believe the reason for the constant warfare because we don't belong here we're passing by and the more we become like christ the less we're going to fit in so the more we're going to have confrontation, the more we're going to get people attacking us because we don't conform, because we don't act like them, because we're set apart, because we're more like Christ. And what we have, they can't understand. If they're not walking in being led of the spirit, they don't know Christ. They can't understand. They have no understanding. They have no understanding. And that will drive them insane. It will drive them crazy. And again, it's spiritual warfare. We're not fighting against the flesh. It's a spiritual warfare. So if they're walking with the enemy, when they confront you, those two spirits, they're going to clash. But we have to see beyond what we're seeing with the physical eyes. We have to learn to see with the spiritual eyes. And we need to remember that we don't fight against flesh. We fight against the principalities that try to exalt against who God is. And well, how it is that, that? Yes, it is that opposite spirit that is attacking your spirit because they detect your spirit. It's when they don't detect your spirit that you know that you probably aren't. When you're never having that opposite spirit rear its ugly head against you, then you realize that you should be growing your spirit because you're right, Ismenia. Um, it is... Um, Wow, I just lost my train of thought. But it is absolutely spiritual warfare. It is the their opposite sp spirits detecting the spirit that's within you. And so we always have to be connected to that spirit. And when we got the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, you know, the 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 the, the whatever the enemy is throwing against you, it's going to be deflected by that that shield of faith that you carry. Um, but it does not mean that you will not, you're, you're they're still gonna try. Like, um, uh, you know, when the, those Pharisees were going around selling, trying to, to sell their services to get out evil spirits, and they said, you know, we adjure you to come out by, this, the, uh, by the Jesus who Paul preaches. And they, they said to him, Paul, we know 
who are you? And they attacked him because they had, they didn't have that spirit. They didn't have this Jesus spirit in them, you know? Um, and so those evil spirits attacked them. And what would you like to say, Brenna? Oh, I was just going to say that that was the, um, from Ephesians, the armor of God, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand on your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then and with the, the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And that's what I was talking about is those flaming arrows that come at you when you are you're in battle and you're in spiritual yes. battle and all these these things that do come against us and even even us being here together is a threat those of us that are here together in our heart in our spirit in submission to christ um we being here together is a threat and yes that is the iron sharpening iron and satan hates that crap right there and so I want to tell you, ladies, that um, I am absolutely honored by each one of your presence here tonight. And you, I, you have enriched me. And I just want to thank you for showing up and being faithful in that. I'm giving you a compliment and I'm saying thank you for being faithful. And thank you for the, Brenna. I appreciate it, all of you as well. That is, and that we all take the time. See, this is one thing. Satan attacks anything like this, attacks you from coming, you're too tired, all of the things that are going to come up, you know, uh, that it's just easier not to do something like this, you could spend this hour and a half or two hours or whatever doing anything else. Um, but uh, we all made the effort to come, you know, the ones of us who made the effort to come, you know, we're the biggest threat to Satan you know, to the enemy. And, you know, you, we're bringing up Ephesians here. And this is where, after I wrap up, if he, uh, wrap up Proverbs, we're going to go into Ephesians and make, because it is how we need to show up. It is the blueprint for us as warrior women leaders for Christ. It is our blueprint. And we need to know, learn how to walk in it. Um, uh, so that we can be effective, you know, because the more effective we are, the more warfare we're going to encounter, but the more able we are to, to deflect it. Amen. Because of the authority that we carry. Yes. That's right. Okay. I know I don't get out of bed until I have the full armor on and I have my Bible on the headboard and I start my day um, with the Lord. and. The protection, you know, everybody has their own way of praying. I have mine, but I just, and then when I do get out of bed and my feet hit the floor, I say, devil, get under my feet in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that's how I start my day. And then I usually say, because I'm walking in the spirit. I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness, you know, so you do your scriptures, but I know that spiritual warfare and I, I don't. I don't begin my day or end my day without that shield. Yes, that's good, April. And and he's always the the the, the enemy is always looking for your weaknesses. You know, he, he's always digging, <laughs> looking. So we always have to stay in connection. We can't lose that connection, you know. It, and really it depends on us how much we want what God has for us, you know, and, and on how much of an authority that we can become, how we can really show up for him. It depends on us. It really does. He, we've already been given it. He, he has already provided it to us. Just do we want it, you know, and it is warfare down here. So we have to fight for it. 
because it is his we're in god's kingdom Amen. but you know this world is the kingdom is taken by force yes okay. yes so again the enemy knows who we are do we know who we are well we need to get with the program Amen. each one of us you know if, if we're serious about it being warrior women at all you know we need to get with the program and i'm sure most of us are you know working towards what god has for each of us to do because it re does again i said it already it requires an army and we're part of that well, there indeed. was uh, one thing that i wanted to share real quick that the lord had put on my heart sure. since uh, we brought up the armor of god mm -hmm. uh, i was able to like the lord showed me how there's also uh different types of armor such as um you know, it can fit a person differently, or there could be different sizes. And in that, he also showed me that shields come in different sizes. And um, I just thought that was so interesting, because the shield of faith is what protects us from not some, but all of the flaming arrows of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord uh, brought me to the scripture where the apostles were saying, Lord, increase our faith. And then as the apostles prayed that, or as we pray those things, Lord, increase our faith. I saw the shield of faith grow and how that became like literally a whole shield that could envelop around a person, protecting you from all of the flaming arrows of the enemy and how important that faith is for us to have. Also, because we're saved not by things that we've done, but we're saved by our grace through our faith. And the Lord showed me that as well. I was like, wow, God, you're awesome. I love those revelations from the Holy Spirit. And, you know, also, go ahead. I'm sorry. The power also, the Lord says that the power of God works according to the faith that works within us. Okay. So if you want more of the power of God, Okay, that faith needs to be exercised so that it grows because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in order to walk by faith and we start taking small steps, okay, of faith, and then we're able to do bigger steps to then be able to do faster steps to then be able to run, okay, at a fast speed, okay? And it's like our obedience goes in hand with that because the more we exercise our faith, and our trust in the Lord grows, then when we hear from the Lord, okay, we don't even have to think about it. It's like we act immediately. That means our obedience is faster, quicker, okay? So think, think about that. Those are the things, again, as we mature in the Lord, that he takes us, you know, from the little steps to the bigger steps, and then the test will come. Not everything is the battle. Not everything is, is a trial. Sometimes it's a testing of your faith. Okay, so mm -hmm. I've learned to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want to teach me? Mm -hmm. Okay, in those seasons that I don't understand, and sometimes we think it's the enemy coming to attack. No, it's Lord, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? Okay, yeah. so one so. thing, one thing, Mrs. Menia, thank you for sharing that. Um, today I had that a lot in my, in my, you know, in my mindset. Just I said, you know, through faith, you know, I want to grow and mature and. I want to just abide in your word, Father. You know, let me just not fall short, even though we all fall short in the glory of God. But faith comes in mind when I said, you know what? I was trying to share my story last week, which I couldn't come to you all. And I said, well, I had an emergency, really. It was really heartbroken, but I was like heartbroken because I couldn't be with y'all. <laughs> and I said, okay, let me let me just pray into this season. This week, I couldn't be with with, you know, my loved ones. And, and that's fine. But the faith, you know, it said, how big is my faith right there in that week? You know, I was heartbroken because I couldn't attend. But then I was like, I was going to share my story of the goodness of God, what he has done with me, because my faith in Jesus, you know, it's growing and growing because I wanted to share that story to share how he's been so good to me. And I have not stopped for a moment to realize, you know, and said, let me share my story 
you know, and then my faith increases. Like you said, tiny steps with, with a small story that I wanted to share, my faith increases. And I said, okay, let me just pray about it. I'm still going to come into prayer, you know, that I continue, that I continue to abide in faith because it can be, it can be a little di distractions, you know, tries to get you, you know, to just lose your faith. Yeah, and, and I like that what you said, you know, that kind of confirms me with don't rush, tiny steps, you know, sharing my story little by little, but it, it'll improve my faith in Jesus. Yes, thank you, Isminia. Thank you. That was great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, lady. Thank you. Oh, yes. There was I so want to say one thing real fast. I, Patria, I know you've just been waiting so patiently. No, go but, over. You have um, to with the um, armor of God. Um, this is my experience with that. The Lord showed me, um, it's been a long time ago now, but that I had put on, a, I had a counterfeit armor on. And with that counterfeit armor that we can put on, like with self-help books and all that crap, um, it, it closed my heart. And he showed me that put on my armor and your heart will still be open to receive and give love and the gifts of God. So I just wanted to say that with since we're on the armor of God, like it's important that we put on the armor of God and not our own armor and shielding our hearts from heartache and, and things like that. That is a good point, April. I mean, you know, because our armor is not very effective. <laughs> I've tried that, you know, it doesn't work very well. Um, but another point I wanted to make out, uh, make, uh, Kristen was talking about the shields and the shield of faith. A couple things there. One of the things is faith is actually a gift of the spirit. Um, and we should be, you know, asking God grow that all of the gifts, of course, but faith is one of the essential ones. Grow that one in me. Also talking about those, um, it was just something I had come across before those 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 shields of faith when we're in unity those shields are interlocking and they're stronger it increases those those it increases the strength of the shield of the faith because now they're interlocking because we're working together and it it gives us even more protection when we're willing to work together satan tries to divide he divides and conquers. That's how he does it. God says we're to work in unity. Then our strength increases. Um, so something to think about. Um, yes, we are that, easy prey when we're isolated. But when we come together, and like you said, we put together our shield of faith together, we make like this big cocoon that he cannot penetrate. Um, you know, the Lord was um, showing me how important it is to have sisters in the faith friends okay that will act like the rear mirrors that they allow us to see our blind spots when we're driving that's what the sisters in the faith will do for us okay where we cannot see our blind spots in the spiritual realm the lord will use our sister warriors in faith to guard our blind spots it's like the holy spirit okay when we are listening to the holy spirit he will guard our blind spots too. He will tell us, you know, not there or not that way, you know, look out because we, we need that. We need to have that. Okay. We don't have eyes on our back, but we got to be thankful that we have the Holy Spirit and that we have, like I said, sisters in the faith that are willing to guard our backs. Yes. Okay. In, in type, in type, in time of need. Um, so that is um, that is really important. Um, oh, very good to remember. Patria, do you think that when well, you said I know the Word of God says that faith is a gift. We're all allotted mm -hmm. unto a measure of faith, um, but then there's also the gift of faith. So what uh, Kristen was saying about the shields being different sizes, um, I wonder if that's you know, what the Lord was showing her too is like the size of faith for each person. We, um, we are on different levels in our spiritual walk. And I think that's what she got to see. 
Okay. Yeah. And the more you exercise your faith, um, the way I see it in the spiritual, it's like we're getting another layer. Okay. Another layer, it gets stronger. But then when we come together, um, like she was just sharing, it makes it harder for the enemy to penetrate. And the way I see that, it's mm -hmm. like, again, I see forward, I don't see behind. But maybe what I don't see behind in the spiritual realm, when you guys come along my side, I could see that from your perspective because the Lord is using you, you know, to cover those spots where I cannot see. I don't know if that makes sense, April. Um, so yeah, there, there is the amount of faith that we each have and the power of God works in each of us according to that faith where you are right now. But then there's the gift of faith also, okay, that the spirit gives. And we should desire that. We should be praying for that. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And I feel like also as our authority grows, so does the size of our shield grow because <laughs> it's going to have to, you know, because we're, 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 we're walking in a, in a bigger purpose now, a bigger plan, and the more he can use us. So the more the attacks are going to grow and the bigger our shield is going to be, and the more the more people we need like each other to be around us, the more we need those interlocking shield, shields of our sisters. The more we need to depend on each other. We have got to have each other. You know? And again, like we've been saying, he Satan tries to, to, to stop that in its tracks because that is a threat when we're working together. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Has anyone here personally prayed for faith? The gift of, I'm talking about the gift of faith. Yes. You mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Cause I know what happens when you pray for patience. <laughs> and it's just, I'm just saying, I think but, about But things. there's a verse that says that we need to pursue man. love, pursue faith and godliness, I think is the other one. Um, second thing to 222, I think that's what it is. I have to look it up. Yeah, I know. But we're we're to pursue to. those things. Yeah. So, Patria, you say that you gained more faith by um, how do, okay, when you pray for faith, what are some of your experiences, you know, like that have helped build that faith? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's faith, believing, I, I think pretty much go hand in hand. And so, a lot of it has to do with is the more you grow in him, the more you believe what the word says. So the more that means that your faith is growing, the more that you actually believe what the word says, it means that you trust him. It starts becoming experiential. You trust him that he's going to do what he says. So Really, I think part of what faith is, is relationship building. So the more, the closer that you come to him, the more you trust in him, the more you rely on him, the more you love him, the more that faith grows. Um, and then you start having experiences as well. When, when he sees, you know, then he starts testing you and those, those little faith things, um, you know, and showing you where you might be weak um so like one of the things that happened and you were there april um was it was a big thing um but it taught me a whole lot um when that opposite spirit showed up um a few weeks back at our um meeting this wednesday night thing when that opposite spirit showed up um one, so one, one thing, of, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I had been praying to him. I had total, complete faith that um, nothing like that would happen. <laughs> it didn't even cross my mind, you know, because I'd been praying to him. I uh, bring the right people and keep the wrong people away. And so I had complete faith that he was going to do that. And so when that opposite spirit showed up, um, I really had to lean into him and seek um, him as to 
why that happened and um and the, realized that first of all he showed me that spirit would not have showed up if i was not walking in authority um showing me who i who i actually am giving me an experience of what i carry and what every single one of us should be carrying and probably is carrying we just haven't had the opportunity to experience yet and what I, i'm telling you we probably all need to experience it, get that first one out of the way so that we now can stand up in the authority that we have and start using it. It created in me a bigger faith. It be created in me a bigger understanding of who each one of us is um, and should be. That um, it, it just grew my faith is what it did. I believe that when we pray for faith, um, he will put us in situations where we cannot control them, where it's beyond our capabilities. And like you just said, we have to lean onto him. We have to fully depend on him for that situation. And um, I, I fully believe that, again, that's part of exercising our faith. Okay, we're praying for more faith, and the only way to 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 know that we have it is to put it to the test. Right. Okay, to be That's put in situations right. where we have never been before, where we've never encountered before, um, and we really have to look up to him in faith to come to the rescue um, and to give us the discernment, to give us the wisdom, to give us the peace that surpasses understanding in that moment, to give us the joy, you know, which it will give us the strength to, to withstand, you know, in that moment. It's all of those gifts um, that are stirred by faith, that are received by faith, that we can then walk in them um, in that moment of need, um, you know, and, and rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us through it. 